So before we answer application data created on July 2023, the same application state has sought for leave to retain the respondents for a period of three days to let go and conclude the investigations related with the unlawful assembly, unlawful damage to property and finding of unlawful assembly. I will read further the miscellaneous proceedings before me and the decisions advanced by the state. I'm satisfied that the state have not presented any tangible compelling reasons to allow the continued detention of the respondents. As well as another stated there that the state will still be done, while at the same time the respondents uh, the, the same the respondents are on the on, uh, on board of the decision of the chair of the police uh, is the thing. And as such, the court is that to follow through rather than to grant support to respondents and allow the police to conduct their investigations for the judge. In this regard, in this regard uh, the court shall grant a ruling and go to the respondents. And this allows us to the court. <coughs> in the end, the resolution of the serious application will be granted to the judge to delete the response. The future of the respondents are here by the meeting to the number of 1,000, who are showing to the net amount of the cash bill of 50,000. The bond and bond term shall remain in effect and shall expire upon the new charge of the respondents in the courts. The respondents are here by all who participate in the state or any other form of support for any other form of assembly. After the courts are led by the alleged to have attended and funded as a member of the state, and which are capable of leading to malicious damage to property or unlawful lawful assembly or monument to property. As far as the first response is not to ask for the system of the second public plan until an investigation of this case are complete and a decision in a certain decision made, the applicants and the, the respondents shall report in uh, for three days before the SOS of the handball investigation officer at the end of the for the process of completion of investigations. The respondents are to the view of this procedure for this. The respondents are to the scope of the police to be done under commission investigation unless they go part of the experience to have a particular charge under the pending further charge. But in charge, under the pending further actions of charge, if charged. Pending compliance of the one above each of the respondents will be demanded at the same investigation. The police can still do their investigations. Uh, when the respondents are out on bond. So and I've given uh, I've given them a bond of 100,000 with a surety of like amount or a cash bill of 50,000. Uh, there will be a motion of 24th of July, 2013. Thank you. Uh, this is Peter Mandini. Yes. Attached to the police as you are doing general investigation. I'm conducting investigations into the offenses of malicious violence and property, contrary to section B that nine one as B in section B that nine two A of Penal Code. And your of dispatch of building and dispatchers for your fashion, prior trusting, assembly, contrary to section the five of Penal Code. Caracterously interfering with vehicles contrary to section 7 as being with section 36 of penal code and the incitement to violence contrary to section 6B C of penal code among other offenses. At the first respondent, without proof of excuse, a time was which were attributed to incite members of public to destroy properties within Sierra Township. But the uh, unlawful assemblies are still going on. And the releasing the uh, respondent at this point we will encourage them. Um, we will on. That the engineer that is to get back statements from post ordinances before the respondent has come to Yes. But, uh, if that 
if the respondents are released at this point, there is possibility that they will interfere with the investigation. And the uh, first respondent is sus being suspected to be the one who is funding the unlawful assembly and the riots within Seattle. What I have stated here is true, the best of my knowledge. I'm saying that this application of the face of it is malicious for the first respondent. For this application is on the face of it malicious, vexatious, incompetent, irredeemably incompetent and only deserving of dismissal. I say so for the following reasons. That the application before you seeks to detain the first respondent for three more days without any proper basis or justification. I wish to refer court to Article 29A and B of the Constitution in respect to the freedom and security of the citizens of this country. Article 29A and B, allow me to read, A and B, that every person has a right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be, number one, deprived of freedom arbitrarily or without just cause, and number two, detained without trial, except during a state of emergency, in which case the detention is subject to Article 58. For good measure, Article 58 speaks to state of emergency. Your Honor, this application basically seeks to violate what Article 29A and B prohibits. The application seeks to deprive the first respondent of his rights to liberty and freedom, and it seeks to detain him without trial, without any basis or justification. Your Honor, in the architecture of our Constitution, this court is under constitutional obligation to protect the first respondent's right to liberty and freedom. If you peruse that application, you will discover, Your Honor, that the deponent, the investigating officer, and the state have not preferred any charge against the respondent. They have not laid any justifiable basis upon which the charges they propose to levy against the first respondent will be brought, and that the respondent, if you gave him an opportunity to talk, he will tell you that after he was summoned to the police and arrested, he was not informed of the charges. One, the reason why he was being summoned before the police, and two, the charges pursuant to which these people seek to prefer against him. In essence, the for this application seeks to have the first respondent detained in custody to enable the investigating officer to commence and not to continue to commence, but for good measure also to continue, investigations. I have told court that this goes against the architecture of our constitution. Allow me, Your Honor, to refer you to Article 49, 1G of the constitution, on the right of arrested persons. And this is what it says that an arrested person has a right at the first appearance, at the first court appearance, to be charged, 
or to be informed of the reason for the detention continuing, or to be released. What is the import of that provision? The provision simply tells you that the moment you arrest a citizen of this country who is subject to this constitution and present him or her before court, the moment you present them, you must charge. If you do not charge, you must inform that person of the reason for continued detention. If that is not there, you have to release them. And Your Honor, because there is no charge, I want to believe that they will hide under paragraph 2 information of the reason for detention. I want to submit that the way you inform an arrested person of their right to continue to be detained is by way of presentation of a holding charge. Before you, no holding charge has been submitted to you. No charge has been submitted to you. All you are being told, please give us these people so that we can investigate. In other words, what the state is asking you to do is can you, using your discretion as court, can you violate their constitutional rights? I dare say that not even the court has the right or power to violate a fundamental constitutional right as a right to liberty. Bondo knock dangere.
Siyezi toka hiyo wakati mwingine. Wee Rona chana na mimi. Aa, wee. Watoto wangu bado ni wadogo. Mm-mm. Ojo kuna nyoko na sili huko.